All right, guys. It is a lovely, exciting Friday night here in the collapse of everything. We have made it to March 1st, 2024. Two months down. Good Lord. And I have been off uh, being a Doomer real estate investor in Florida and actually took a couple of days of vacation. So I have not had much time to crawl around the mainstream media and medium.com and all the rest of them for the our newest uh, roundup here. I think this is the third edition of Ain't Gonna Happen Friday. And uh, again, I'm, you know, guys, I'm trying not to become just totally redundant every week. And I'm trying to figure out what this thing is going to look like. And this is only for the past couple of nights. Just a quick little view at the mainstream media. So instead of the 20 stories, we're just going to look at six. And again, you know, you need to put these into the, you know, just ain't going to happen. The outlandish, the just completely just irredeemable horseshit uh, level. Then you have the mainstay, the apocaloptimist uh, story about people who understand we're fucked but think it's going to turn out anyway. And then we have a few honest reportings and there's a couple in here who don't quite fit in but are more just uh, what I would call a bright, bright green lie uh, story. So it's all mixed up, but we're going to figure out which category the first one. We're going to lead off with one. Uh, and you can pick which category this ain't going to happen. Belongs in from Associated Press right here in the mainstream media news. Scientists create new idea on how to hack a warming planet drying the upper atmosphere. All right. Government scientists have cooked, cooked up a new concept for how to potentially cool an overheating Earth, fiddle with the upper atmosphere to make it a bit drier. Yes. Water vapor is a natural greenhouse gas that traps heat just like carbon dioxide from burning coal, oil, and gas. So researchers at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and NASA figure if they can just inject ice high up in the air, water vapor and the upper atmosphere would get a bit drier and that could counteract a small amount of human caused warmth. Right now it is just the spark of an initial idea that ain't gonna happen. All right, that was the one that we have. Uh, this is for all of you, uh, well, all of you, the, the one or two people on the planet thinking that Joe Biden, Joe Biden, the lame duck president, uh, in the last uh, 10 months of his presidency before he hands the reins over to Donald Trump to uh, take over where Joe Biden left off. So what is Joe Biden going to do to save the planet in his last 10 months in office, Biden administration finalizes environmental regulations targeting clothes washers and dryers. There you go. <coughs> the Biden administration finalized energy efficient regulations targeting residential clothes washers and dryers in an effort to curb carbon emissions as part of its broad climate agenda. 
There you go. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, guys, I we're going to move on. <coughs> okay, this is from the Guardian, uh, talking about climate smart farming. So this is from the lefties. You cannot blame you, you know. Whenever I read a story from the Telegraph, which is you, you know uh, England's version of Fox News or whatever, you can just say, well. Uh, they're propping up the fossil fuel, but uh, this one is from the lefties at The Guardian. Some straight ahead reporting. Uh, if you don't want to believe the Trump tarred climate the change denying gang, let's listen to what the lefties at The Guardian are saying today. More than 50% of U.S. funds for climate smart farming do not help the climate crisis. Do you think so? More than half of federal funding for, quote, climate smart agriculture. You know, the, the, the very term climate smart agriculture, this is another one of these oxymorons for the 21st century, there is no such thing as climate smart agriculture. Okay, uh, there might be some ways of farming that aren't quite as climate stupid as other forms. So we might be able to aim for a little bit less climate stupid forms of. Uh, of agriculture, there is no such thing, never will be any such thing as climate smart agriculture. But anyway, uh, I guess that's why even the Guardian is putting the term in quote marks. More than half of federal funding for climate smart agriculture in the U.S goes to farming practices that are unlikely to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and in some cases would increase them, according to a new report by the nonprofit Environmental Working Group. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has set aside more than three billion dollars, you know, of taxpayers' money to give to farmers who practice what they call climate smart agriculture, but roughly 1.9 billion of that, that's about two-thirds, is being spent on practices that experts say are not actually combating the climate crisis. The report delves into one of USDA's largest conservation programs the Environmental Quality Incentives Program designed to incentivize eco-friendly farming. The program pays for an array of conservation practices proven to reduce emissions or sequester carbon. Uh, and then don't forget the Inflation Reduction Act is pouring an additional eight and a half billion dollars into climate smart practices. This is Ann Schlesinger, an agricultural economist who authored the report. Quote, a lot of that money will end up going to practices that don't actually have proven climate benefits. There's not a lot outside of these federal programs that are going to help farmers reduce their emissions. So if this money is not going to the right practices, then agriculture as a whole in the United States is not going to reduce their emissions. Thank you, The Guardian. Ain't gonna happen. Right here in The Guardian. 
from the Guardian to the Telegraph. Okay, now here's an issue where the Telegraph is, is one of the biggest and vociferous, well, the Telegraph in England and Fox News in, uh, in, in the U.S. are obviously the big uh, pit bulls against the, this uh, unadulterated horseshit uh, green energy transition because the Telegraph and Fox News are, you know, they're here to prop up the fossil fuel industry. Okay, so people, what particularly uh, the, the, these limp dick lefties cannot understand that they, that they can't hold these two facts in their brain at the same time. Okay, that Fox News and the Telegraph have a pro-fossil fuel agenda. That is a true statement. So, because they understand that is a true statement, they anything that the Telegraph or Fox News says that the, the Green New Deal energy transition, whatever you want to call it, is a pack of fucking bright green lies that ain't gonna happen, then they claim that's got to be a lie because the Telegraph and Fox News are the ones saying it ain't going to happen. All right, and uh, then this is a little bit of a problem that people are too stupid not to understand that just because somebody uh, is, is, is championing the fossil fuel industry on one hand that they can't be probably, well not probably, you know, outside of Derek Jensen and, and the deep green resistance uh, teaming up with the Telegraph and Fox News. Uh, understand that this, that, that this is the biggest pack of lies being rammed down our throats Good God, since uh, I mean, I honestly don't know. Uh, it's certainly the biggest lie that's the, that these clueless morons have been trying to ram down my throat. Uh, I'm 64 years old. I bought this bullshit for maybe a year, about 10 years ago, to uh, start it. Uh, but thank you for the Telegraph, uh, the right-wingers over at the Telegraph for some honest reporting. Well, this is one, it, 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 this isn't exactly an ain't gonna happen because it is gonna happen. Uh, th th this, this is just a, uh, a bright green lie that Manga Bay, uh, uh, you know, Manga Bay, deep green resistance and the Telegraph and Fox News all sounding alike. Just the, just the latest uh, story, I've had many rants on this one. Britain's biggest power station, quote, burns ancient forests for green fuel. Britain's largest power station has been accused of ecocide over allegations it is burning trees taken from ancient and protected woodland in Canada. That's exactly what it is guilty of. It is flat out ecocide. This is the Telegraph stating a fact. Well, they're saying they've been accused of it. They've been accused of it because they're guilty as charged. This is Drax, the, the Drax power station, I guess. Drax, which once burned coal, but now uses wood harvested in North American forests and shipped to the UK, has been accused of destroying the environment in its push to go green. The North Yorkshire power plant's wood pellet fuel uses timber from primary and old growth forests in British Columbia with unique habitats and ecological functions, according to analysis by three campaign groups. Activists also allege that many of the 
logs delivered to Drax's pellet mills in the province came from priority deferred areas, rare and irreplaceable woodlands where experts recommend against harvesting. Drax insists that all fuel comes from sustainable sources. Um, anyway, this goes on and on. We've been uh, talking about this uh, for, for years about how this biomass horseshit, uh, you know, burning the planet to save the planet. Uh, it, 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 it's unadulterated horseshit. There's plenty of studies that show that biomass burning actually over the lifetime uh, produces more greenhouse gases than burning coal and in addition to it is, is more just directly environmentally destructive ecocidal to the planet than coal mining. Uh, and, and the fucking United Nations is still with a straight face uh, with, with, with more and more and more studies, blah blah blah, people blowing the bullshit whistle, unadulterated horseshit, that biomass burning, burning down the planet to save the planet is sustainable. Uh, the UN is going to go right on talking their 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 fucking horseshit, biomass and hydroelectric. Uh, I've had my hydroelectric rants. I think you know those. Uh, now biomass is going to keep happening. My guess is in the next that in 10 years from now we are going to be burning down more trees uh, I, I will say twice as many trees will be or are going to be uh, destroyed and turned into these bullshit wood pellets and, uh, and, and, and they're just talking about England which is one of the major countries just to uh, electricity for a country of what 60 million people uh, anyway that is going to happen but what's not going to happen is what the United Nations uh, in any little limp dick lefty greeny swallowing the bullshit is claiming is going to happen and you can take that from the telegraph as long as we're over at the Telegraph, uh, I was thinking I probably should make this part of my uh, Monday morning good news roundup because, you know, this past Monday I did not have one article, but uh, this can serve as, uh, as good news or ain't going to happen. The American revolt against green energy has begun. All right, we have some good news. Just one more reason why the green energy transition is not going to happen. Is going to happen. Uh, they're basically just repeating verbatim a USA Today story. Uh, with, with, uh, uh, but, but of course, before they just, and, and I couldn't access the USA Today story, they start out with, in a story filled with all the standard climate alarmist narrative. So this, is uh, this, guys, uh, okay, uh, this is the, the fucking Telegraph and Fox News claiming that any climate alarmist is, is, uh, is swallowing the, these bright green lights. So that is claiming that I am not a climate alarmist. 
uh, Elliot Jacobson is not a climate alarmist. Derek Jensen is not a climate alarmist. That anybody uh, at so this is where the Telegraph and Fox News are full of shit. Now that 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 is correct about some people, you know. But a doomer is a climate. Uh, one definition of doomer is a climate alarmist with a fucking brain. Okay, a doomer. You can still be a climate alarmist. You can be a bigger climate alarmist than any climate alarmist out there. All right. Uh, if you're a doomer, you understand that the fossil fuel industry, that the Telegraph and Fox News are cheerleading and propping up, uh, is going to destroy the climate. And you also understand that these false bullshit solutions that fighting the, the the fossil fuel emissions is going to do no more to save this climate or this planet than fossil fuels and in many ways is going to make the situation worse. That is the definition of a doomer. We understand it is the fry that way. It used to be that uh, up until about a year ago I would have said the definition of a doomer uh, as anyone who understands is the frying pan or the fire, but uh, then, then we get Joe Biden. With, with Donald Trump, we have the frying pan. With Joe Biden, we have the frying pan and the fire. And instead of the frying pan or the fire, we have a little bit smaller frying pan. Uh, well, not really, because Joe Biden has pumped more oil than Donald Trump ever could in his wildest wet dream. So we've got the frying pan and the fire uh, under Joe Biden. But of course, I am not a political channel. Uh, anyway, USA Today recently reported on the rising movement by local governments in the United States to refuse to permit unwanted wind and solar industrial sites in their jurisdictions after setting the stage by parroting the Biden administration goals of quote 100 percent clean energy by 2035 uh, which obviously is flat out, unadulterated, ain't gonna happen horseshit, uh, just one more bright green lie spewing out of Joe Biden's mouth, ain't gonna happen. It's a goal that depends on the building of large-scale solar and wind. USA Today points to the reality that such big intrusive, ugly, and destructive industrial sites have been rejected by twice as many county governments as approved them. Oh. Yes, uh, the rejections come about by a combination of, quote, outright bans, moratoriums, so I think that's moratoria, construction impediments and other conditions that make green energy difficult to build. Simply put, these huge industrial sites, we simply must stop using, this is back to the telegraph, simply put, these huge industrial sites we simply must stop using, you know, that unadulterated horseshit, friendly sounding term, farms, farms, to describe them, create all manner of negative consequences for local communities, consequences like loud noise from wind turbines, hundreds of dead birds and bats sprinkled across the countryside, thousands of acres of productive farm or ranchland taken out of production for many years, if not permanently, spoiled views, enormous graveyards filled 
with 150 foot wind turbine blades and solar panels popping up all over the place and impacts to local wind and weather patterns that are only now beginning to be understood. Um, those consequences and more have become increasingly clear as time has progressed and that is making it harder for developers to gain acceptance from the communities that would serve as host and hopefully this is going to happen, such pushback is likely to grow more strident in the coming years as it becomes clear to citizens that their state governments have failed to enact effective regulatory structures, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by that time, these sites will most likely have been sold off by the big developers who built them. Um, anyway, but we're just going to wind up with a story next to that. One more uh, article which probably should have ended up in my uh, Good News Monday. A detour on the road to the clean energy transition. Investors who piled into clean energy themes in the last few years are, expensing, are experiencing some performance pain this year as we the, appear to be experiencing a detour on the road to the clean energy transition. Do you think so? And then they break this all down higher interest rates, lower, lower electric vehicle demand, of course need for infrastructure, what they don't uh, ever talk about. Uh, then they go down and look at all of these energy companies uh, that, are, that are just losing money hand over fist. Uh, Global X Hydrogen down 22%, Invesco Solar uh, has lost $1,363,000,000, down over 20%, Alps Clean Energy ETF down 19%, Defiance Next Gen Hydrogen uh, down 19%, this goes on and on and on and on as more and more of these green energy uh, schemes, as more and more people are uh, understanding that this is bullshit, bright green lies, uh, anybody with a fucking brain uh, who spends five minutes looking into this shit uh, can understand. Uh, you, you can either you can either spend five fucking minutes doing your own research, or you can listen uh, to Joe Biden and AOC. What did what was it that, that AOC quote that I was at last week about how uh, Joe Biden has made enormous strides in uh, the climate fight. As every year of Joe Biden's administration, the greenhouse gases and the global temperature go up, up, up. Uh, anyway, so that's my ain't gonna happen slash good news roundup for the week. What do you think, little dog? Did you survive that? You look like you did all right with that one get out there and enjoy uh, burning down the planet to save the planet while well, you still can my guys how do I turn off this camera that I've been using for how many years